All right, so we have two setups we look for every day. And, and like I said, it's, um, this is for the, uh, any futures, stocks, futures, um, any futures, stocks, currency markets. Um, also works on the Forex and crypto markets. So it really doesn't matter what markets you uh, look at. It's the same exact setup. Uh, we start out with a full zone retracement just to review for you guys. Um, that is when price gets inside of our zone. A green zone would be a buy zone. So this is a buy zone all the way up. We're looking for pullbacks to that buy zone. Okay, uh, red would be sell zones. You look for a pullback to that sell zone. Once you get to that zone, you look for these um, automated arrows to fire to get you a qualified pull in to pull in on that specific chart. This is a the the long the longest chart I show uh, as far as time frame in the room is a 12020 Rinko. I'm going to show you this morning on this video how to set the trade up with a longer Rinko bar a longer Rinko uh, and then show you how to enter off a smaller time frame off the 11313. So you can see that once you pull back into the zone, like to when we penetrate the zone or get inside the zone, if you if the zone's gonna fail, then you'll see these red dots started to appear immediately. So you see the cell zone did not get a, a arrow. And you saw these red dots print up here and green dots start printing. That means we flip from a sell side market to a buy side market. So then we look for buy side setups. So you, the arrow will automatically fire, but you can see when the FZR will, will, will come up because the oscillator below here has to get below 20. And you have to penetrate or come within a couple ticks of the zone. If you're too far away from the zone, like this arrow, or this arrow, or this arrow, that is categorized as my next setup. My next setup that came up yesterday, these all fired live in the room yesterday afternoon. My next setup is called a momentum setup. So these are FZR trades because they penetrated the zone and they got a full retracement below 20. So that's FZR zone. or FZR trade, just call it FZR. That's when you're getting inside of the zone or at the zone and penetrating the zone, but no opposite color dots appear before the arrow appears. So that lets you know that you have a full zone retracement qualified setup. Now this is a longer time frame, so this is great for position traders by itself. But if you want if you want to trade or you want to trade with smaller stops because your stops would be at the swing high or swing low of that Rinko. So if you trade with smaller stops, then you can trade off of a smaller time frame. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. The second setup, you can see that we are away now. Now we're away from the zone. We're away from the zone, away from the zone, away from the zone. And consequently, below, we, the, the oscillator is above 20. It's right at 20 here. It's above 20 here when the arrow fires. And it's above 20 here. So these are called MOMO setups or called momentum setups. So now this is the only other setup you're going to look for on a daily basis. What I've done is I narrowed it down to two setups that happen on a daily basis over and over and over again. We don't need to have 100 setups, 50 setups, different setups that come every couple months. These setups work over and over and over on a daily basis on all these markets. It's either the market's either going to be in a full zone retracement and fire outside that zone, right or, or it's going to trend change and give you a sell sell zone or a buy zone and then you're going to have either a momentum when the momentum comes in the market so after you come out of the fzr the market gets some traction and we start moving the market's moving now and you get in what's called a momentum setup that is where the oscillator has to stay now you don't want to get below 20 you want to stop right at it which it did here or even better yet you want to stay right above the 20. This is called a momentum setup. 
the pullback on the oscillator never gets below 20. The arrow fires, and now you have what's called a momentum setup because price action is already moving to the upside, and this is called a MOMO. Now, this is off the longer time, fr time frame chart of 12020. You can see the wrinkles are really smooth on it. I'm going to show you how you can check down to a smaller time frame on these trades. So that's a, not an MPO, but a MOMO. That's a momentum setup. There's a MOMO. There's a MOMO. Now, when you get a speed bar that comes in also, that's even better because you're catching the rolling position counter trend traders. You'll see that uh, speed bar that comes in on the short term and long term time frame. That means there's an exhaustion on that side. You see the speed bar formed here, speed bar formed here on the MOMO and the price just accelerated to the upside. And there's a MOMO trade there also. All right, so those are the two setups we look for. Uh, either it's an FCR or a MOMO. And this is off the 12020. Put down so you understand it. Uni Rinko on 2020. Now, if you don't want to trade off just the 12020, now some of you will trade off this and use a, the hotkeys to get in on a retracement. A lot of you guys use, like to use a four tick retracement on this chart, meaning you come out of FZR and you get, a, you get a, an arrow that fires. A lot of you guys like to put limit orders in. Four ticks works quite well. It puts a limit order in at four ticks. When that Rinko bar retraces, you get filled up minus four ticks. A lot of you guys are using that. Um, you do risk missing them on the Momo trades, but the FCRs, you typically get filled on the FCR trades because they oscillate before they take off. Momos usually take off right away. All right? So that is the 12020. Now, how can we use how can we how can we trade the momentum chart then with a shorter time frame? Because what I like to look at, even if you like to let's say you'd like to trade off this time frame by itself, once an FZR comes up, the best momentum trade you're going to have is the Momo that is right after the FZR. Now this is what's going to happen on this strategy that I'm building for you guys. It, it's got to come out of the, F, the FZR. It's got to come out of the zone first. Once it fires that arrow, you're going to look for the first Momo arrow on this time frame or the smaller time frame. So if you specifically want to trade this time frame, you look for the Momo to fire right after it comes out of the FZR. This is your highest probability Momo. The FZR here fires, that's your high probability MOMO. Now, what you can do, you can use a smaller time frame off the 113.13. Now what we can do is we can look for MOMO trades that fire. We can look for momentum trades that fire right after you get inside the FCR. So then what you can do is you can use your smaller time frame and say, hey, okay, I see us coming into the MOMO. Oops. Where'd it go? I see it coming into the momentum trade. Hold on one sec. Let me get it back up here. I would just change it here for you real quick. I think I just accidentally put it off there. Let's see. So let's change this to 113.13 now. So what you can do is you can actually enter the trade off of a lower time frame by doing one specific setup, and I'll show you. Now what we want to do is we want to use a smaller time frame to enter after the larger time frame 
has came inside of the momentum chart, I mean, in, into an FZR. So this is this morning's action. This happened at, what, 648. What you want to see is you want to see coming into the FZR in the larger time frame, which happened here. It shows in the smaller time frame also. also. See how we came in the momentum and arrow fired, automatically, automatic arrow fired. The first Momo that comes in will be the best setup. Now, this is early action. Let me show you yesterday's action. So going back to what I just showed you, here is the now, here is the 113.13. I just showed you the 120.20. So now we got a 113.13, which is a smaller time frame with smaller stops. But I want to show you the same price action. Now it's a 113.13. You still look for the two same setups, smaller time frame. Look how we get into an FCR. Right? FCR. But then watch. We go into a momentum setup. Let's see. Find one here. Here we go. All right, so you go into an FZR. So this is FZR off the larger time frame. The larger time frame printed here, printed in arrow, because it's a full retracement. Once you get the first momentum setup that comes in on the smaller time frame, this is a Momo above 20%. That's going to be your buy signal. Now, the first one that crosses, I'll show you. I had several of them yesterday. So here we come out at FZR in the larger time frame, an arrow printed with all this price action that happened here on the longer time frame, it printed an arrow short. Once you look for that, look for a cross of the MAs on the smaller time frame. Look for the arrows to fire on the Momo on the smaller time frame. Here's a Momo short, Momo short, Momo short. And these aren't small trades. These are what, 03 and 3 quarters down to... 94, that's almost a 10 S&P point trade off a small time frame. We had several of those yesterday. If you look, here's a great example again. So what you do is you come into, the best case scenario is this, is that here's where we have the larger time frame uh, FZR, right? So you have an FZR here. We're inside of the zone. This is a smaller time frame, the 113.13. So the 120.20 fired an arrow right here at this level, right there, right that low. Right, a 9.50. There's your FZR. You can look at the smaller time frame to fire a momentum trade right after coming out of the FZR because the best momentum trades are coming outside the FZR. So this is what's called an extreme MOMO. An extreme MOMO is where I'm allowed to just pull back to the 20 and get an arrow. But better yet, if I stay above 80, I call this an extreme MOMO. These, this is the best you can get right there. An extreme Momo because I'm staying above 80 and I'm getting an error on the small time frame which is a momentum trade and I'm crossed up. I crossed up. My MAs are crossed. It goes into another momentum setup and another momentum setup. But your best momentum setup, whatever time frame you trade, is after a qualified FZR reverses outside the zone. So our larger time frame reverse gave us a green bar. We waited on the small time frame and we got a Momo. Now, this is called a tweezer trade. I love these trades. With, and we have this on the strategy uh, for you guys. If you get a double doji with an arrow coming outside of an FZR and it's a Momo, you're looking for a big punch. This is a big punch on this trade. 97 and a half yesterday. That's all the way up to 18. And you're talking almost 20 S&P points right there just on that trade from 9.54 to 10 o'clock in six minutes. 20 S&P points with a small stop. Tweezers love to explode with my arrow on Momo trades outside of FZR. This is the best setup you're going to get according to this algo. Right there. Tweezer with the Momo with a qualified FCR. That's, a, that's the most punch you're going to get on any market. I don't care what futures you trade, stocks, currency, crypto, doesn't matter. If you see this combination come out inside the FCR, 
just watch all you guys and gals that have the program on your own computers go back and look see for yourself you get the first Momo app coming outside of the FCR qualified you get these big punches so do you have to have a tweezer no just a regular chart will be fine um, as far as that goes because here's another tweezer you get the tweezer there's an FZR but this is a smaller time frame here let me show you something so this is where the boxes I, I, I did these boxes to show you where the FZR fired on the larger time frame so an arrow fired right here in this box it took all these bar, bars to fire so here's what I want you to do I educate traders to look for the first momentum trade on the smaller time frame after you get the cross it may be already crossed up which is okay you fire your first arrow after coming out of a 12020 FZR so this is a 12020 I'm looking we're looking at a 11313 right now but this that box is comprised of a 12020 So where that box closes is where you get one arrow. So that's a 12020. But we're actually trading off a smaller time frame to get small stops of 11313. Because your stops can be below these swing lows of where these arrows are at. Where the arrow's at, that's your, that's your stop. Right below, two ticks below that arrow, two ticks below the arrow, two ticks below the arrow, two ticks below the arrow. So if you look at yesterday morning, you get the you got the 12020 that printed an arrow rejection outside of the FZR and there's your Momo trade 20 S&P point play potential right there it did not get above or below 20 that's a momentum that's a tweezer extreme momentum this is an extreme momentum too this is the best you're gonna get momentum trade you're gonna get look at the extreme momentum it stays above 80 love these setups they happen every single day over and over again you just got to be patient wait for them that's an extreme momo right there why why do you use a smaller time frame and use a 12020 to do that because what can happen if you fit if this zone fails let's say you come inside the zone right here here's a great example so here is where the 12020 printed and let me show you why you, you can use this technique Here's where the 12020 printed. They printed an arrow, the larger time frame. Well, if you just go on the 12020, if that turns a red reversal bar, I would stop out immediately if you use that type of chart because price action is reversing, right? It should stay green, green, green all the way up. But look at the smaller time frame. It told you not to get in this trade. Why? Because here's where the 12020 produced an arrow. This whole box that produced one arrow to go long. But look at the smaller time frame. You can check down your smaller time frame and see if you have momentum in the market. We got the cross, yes. Do we have any type of momentum arrow that fires off? No. No trade. So it flips back over to red, and we go right back into an FCR short. Right there. So you can qualify, you can qualify using larger time frames. There's a larger time frame here that produced the arrow right there so you can use a larger time frame to time the trade first and then see if it crosses on the smaller time frame to get the first momentum long there all right here we go again that we got a we got a, the whole box came in that's where the box came in at this low you get your crossover and you get a momentum trade right there off the smaller time frame so you can use a larger time frame, you can use a larger time frame to fire in these trades. Now we haven't had any setups here except for out of the FZR. So you look for this momentum. This is the only trade setup you look for. You don't take these trades down here because it's a lower wave. You take the first one, there it is, good to go. But what you can do is use that larger time frame, the 12020, you use a larger time frame to do what? You use this larger time frame to look for qualified FCR trades that fire out of the zone. Then you can check down to your small time frame, 
to see if it crosses. So here, see how we got rejected out of the zone this morning? So it got rejected, an arrow fired, and guess what? The smaller time frame got you short right there at that swing for the nice push. Yesterday the same way. Let's look at all the price action throughout the day. So you can see, once you come down into a zone, so here's what, 8 o'clock in the morning, 8.50 in the morning, you get a rejection out of here, right? Well, the, the smaller 113.13 got you long right here. Here you get a rejection outside of the zone on the 120.20, right? So you get an arrow. Right here where that circle is is where it got long on the smaller time frame off a of momentum chart. See how that works? So it qualifies, what it does, that larger time frame qualifies at the momentum starting, and then the smaller time frame you can fire in there for continuation. Now here's where it failed. Now watch. Here's where the 12020 failed. It got a reversal bar, the arrow fired. And this is one I just showed you on the 11313. But guess what happened? The 11313 never crossed up. It never fired an arrow. So guess what? You did not get in this trade using the larger time frame trading into the smaller time frame. Smaller time frame never qualified. And I just showed you that a second ago. But then we go right back into it, and we go back into a qualified rejection. Arrow fired automatically in the 12020. And the 11313 crosses down. You get the first momentum trade, and the market starts falling apart. So you can see how I can qualify each trade. I'm putting this in the strategy. I'm letting the 12020 get rejected first. <clears throat> so I'm letting the 12020, right? We're letting this 12020 get rejected, form the arrow, get the arrow automatically of forms for you get rejected outside of the zone or at the zone, and then check down. So check this out. So this is 9.10. Let's go back to it so you understand. So we got a rejection at 9.05 to uh, 9.05 right there, 9.05. It got inside the zone. This is 120.20, and I'll, let's go back to the 113.13. So instead of taking the 120.20 because your stop's going to be a little bit larger, it's a larger time frame, check down to a small time frame. I want to see a momentum trade happen off of a qualified rejection. So go back to 905. And I want to see a qualified rejection. All right, so there's a rejection. So this is where it happened. This is where I, got, I had the rejection happen, right? I just showed you off the larger time frame. An arrow happened right here off the larger time frame. All these boxes comprised of just one bar. Right, that's one bar. So you look for the first cross on the 113.13, and you look for the first momentum arrow off the 113.13 after the 120.20 qualified for a qualified 20 rejection. And you get this type of price action as a 20 S&P point move. You get the tweezer. You get the momentum, etc. My point is, your best trades are going to be a, a rejected trade outside. Let's go back to it one more time before I shut this off at 905. That's a smaller time frame. Go back to the larger. The larger set the whole trade up, and it'll do this on a daily basis. Any type of market you look at, pull up any market you want. It's the same type of setup. You're looking for rejected 12020. That's qualified. You don't have to trade off that 12020 because of the larger time frame. So there's your 12020. Now look, see this difference? That now I just showed you where it pulled in on the 11313. So fire that error right at that swing low. And then I just showed you the 113 that pulled you in right there. And that's the price action you get.